hello and welcome to Eldermere Home. Um, I'm here with um, Master Gunther and Magister Nicola to talk about some working demosis. So, uh, Master Gunther, can you tell us a bit about yourself and what your kingdom office is? Well, for me, it's the for the salient points that are in this interview is that I am the uh, uh, Deputy Earl Marshal for Archery and the Deputy Earl Marshal for Throwing Weapons in the Kingdom of Eldamir. Those jobs usually don't go together, but just happen to be at this point. Convenient. And Nicola is I'm the lackey. And at, at this point, Nicola is acting as my Cuban advisor. <laughs> to make sure I don't miss anything. I'm the legal advisor. I'm the law speaker, so I'm the legal <laughs> advisor. That's it. Well, the more the merrier. <laughs> well, both of you are, are both very active in the archery community um, and uh, thrown weapons as well. So can you tell me a bit about um, your role as the Kingdom Archery Thrown Weapons Marshal? Okay, well. As with most kingdom offices, it's uh, a fair amount of its administration, just um, keeping track of everybody's warrants, uh, make sure everybody's up to date with their memberships, to uh, liaise with society on any changes that are coming down regarding the martial disciplines, to liaise with the kingdom or a marshal, to make him aware of any changes that are happening and to report to him uh, quarterly and um, during the doomsday reports. and. Uh, well, to a certain extent, being the cheerleader, to try to keep uh, keep everything working copacetically uh, throughout the kingdom, um, and make sure that everybody's aware of any changes to any rules. Um, generally, you know, a lot of administration doomsday reports reporting, but also a lot of like liaising and talking to people and helping out to uh, solve any problems and. Um, one thing I wanted to do with this job, since I had both jobs, was to try to maybe coordinate a little more between archery and throwing weapons and do maybe a few more tournaments that are similar, you know, go to an event and have like step one of a tournament, step two of a tournament to sort of encourage uh, people getting involved in, well, people who are only involved, or involved in both, give them something a little more to do involving both. <laughs> So, is no. what is mm -hmm. so then? You're the the marshal that's in charge of kind of the other marshals throughout the kingdom, the archery and some weapons marshals throughout the kingdom. So, what is the marshal's role um, at an event or in a group? Uh, so, like most um, um, marshal <laughs> marshal marshals. <laughs> uh, uh, martial or martial activities in the SBA. Um, a lot of it is uh, safety, keeping keeping keep an eye on what's going on um, at at an event. Uh, uh, line marshals are there to like uh, keep and keep eye on the at line, make sure everybody's um, following the rules, to uh, inspect uh, equipment, to make sure it's uh, legal. Uh, to uh, set up and take down the uh, range ranges uh, before and after the events. And um, the marshal in charge would be in charge of making sure that everything at the event runs smoothly and that uh, the minimum amount of paperwork needs to be filed. <laughs> yeah, and marshals also uh, spend a lot of time, uh, if we have new people, uh, getting them up to speed. Um, both for thrown weapons and archery tend to have loaner equipment, so sometimes it's getting people kitted up so that they can have their first experience shooting or throwing. And it's probably a little bit, believe it or not, but despite the fact that the thrown weapons are a little bit more sharp, and it's actually a little easier weapons because they're right there with a bow, you've got get people used to holding it and holding it and doing all those steps and, and being safe on the line, which uh, actually applies to both of them. But uh, there's a fair bit with the marshal. When you become a marshal, a lot of what you end up doing is helping people out when they're first starting out and giving advice on equipment and that kind of thing too. So that would be more of the events marshal. The um, um, group marshals would uh, generally be in charge of, well, reporting to the next 
of the baronial marshals and to the king um, during event period, during reporting periods, um, trying to find and maintain practice sites, which are very hard to do for, uh, unfortunately, very hard to do for archery throwing weapons because it's not exactly something that can be done, especially during the wintertime when you don't have outdoor sites and there's not a lot of indoor sites. And um, usually helping to set up or a lot of times a group marshal end up being the marshal in charge of the local event, but uh, if not helping out whoever is in charge to uh, liaise with the rest of the event staff and to uh, make sure everything goes off correctly at the event. Um, so you talked a little bit about loner bows and um, thrown weapons that people could borrow to try it out and marshals training people. With our, with um, fencing and armored combat, people need to be authorized to try it at events. Do people need to be authorized to try archery throw weapons? Uh, no, so long as there's somebody actually there watching them the whole time, that's uh, again, part of a big part of what uh, marshals do when um, they're instructing new people at events is they usually will have the marshal in charge, but you usually have other marshals there, field marshals out there who can, uh, Sort of maybe do one on one with a lot of new people. Um, as long as you're watching them carefully the whole time and making sure they follow the rules, they do not have to be authorized to pull a bow or throw an axe or throw a knife or anything like that. But of course, encourage them to try to do it. And again, well, the, the, um, I should actually preface by saying that you actually don't have to become authorized in uh, throwing weapons or archery. Um, a lot of the, 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 the marshals are the ones that actually have to get a lot of the, you know, the quote unquote authorizations. They have to get the uh, form signed and have to pass a test at the end of their uh, MIT training. So archery and throw weapons people don't actually have to authorize. Um, a, lot of, some, a lot of people we meet will come in with some sort of background in it, either they in school or uh, did it at camp. Um, or went to like one of the places you can go, like you know, storing places. Try it out. A more, um, but yeah, we 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 none of you unless you're a marshal, you don't have to authorize. Um, like uh, fighters and fencers have to do uh, to participate at any level other than marshalling in yeah. archery throwing weapons. And the marshal has the complete discretion if we see someone acting unsafe, um, first of all, to coach them. And if coaching doesn't work, we have the uh, we have the discretion, the marshal in charge at any event or at any practice has the discretion to tell someone to leave the range if they are being unsafe. Which very, very rarely happens. Yeah, we have, we've had to do it before with someone who was had too much to drink, but that was it. Yeah, that part would not be fun. No, nope. not fun <laughs> I think at all. It's, it's definitely the exception, though. It's not something. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It is, it is, it is a very, I, I can count on like one hand. The one of time. That's I can remember one time. Yeah, I think I've actually had to have maybe three times in my entire 30 years. <laughs> yeah, had to actually remove somebody from the field. So are there age restrictions on throne and archery? Uh, general, How young is I mean, too young to participate in it? I mean, so long as the, this lot, the, the, the caveat for that is anybody under age needs to have a parent or designated guardian there with them. Um, there's a certain level of common sense where, you know, you, you're not letting toddlers and stuff throw it, obviously, but like um, I've had people as young as five or six years old um, practice or try, try out the stuff. I try out the equipment in both uh, both disciplines. Um, we actually, we specifically have a very lightweight fiberglass um, ambidextrous bow that we can let, let people, uh, uh, younger people play with uh, if they're first starting out. Uh, it's mostly a choice of the parent. If they think they're willing to do it and uh, think the child is able to do it and, and we obviously monitor them carefully to make sure they're not, um, confused or unsafe or um, whether it's sort of overwhelming them, like there's a certain strength you need to pull a bow, even a 20 pound pull bow. And there's a certain strength you need to throw and even a lightweight knife. Um, so if they're obviously having issues with that, you, you sort of talk to the parent about it. But as far as I know, there's no 
hard age restriction, I think, uh, other than common sense. <laughs> And of course, even then you can just sort of, even if they're not quite up to it, you can still give them verbal instruction and tell them exactly how things work. And maybe, you know, they can come back after their next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we really do count a lot on the parents to, to give us that guidance as to whether they think their child is ready. And again, it's all watching them. If we see a child who doesn't seem to understand the rules of the range, like the fact that uh, you don't shoot when when bows are down or, you know, no running on the range and those things like that. Then once again, the marshal has the discretion to to tell them, you know, you're not quite ready for this. I'm trying to remember back. Did you, I think you mentioned about the already, the different, um, what somebody has to do if they want to be a marshal. Was there anything else that you'd like to? I think we mention? did well. We, we mentioned they need to be authorized, but there is uh, steps they have to go through, and it's slightly different depending on the discipline. Mm -hmm. So, for um, a lot of people in like fighting and uh, armored combat and fencing, will recognize a lot of this. So, as I said, unlike unlike fighting and fencing, individual act participants do not have to authorize, but um, all the marshals have to authorize and. Uh, in both the case of the throwing weapon and archery, you'll get an MIT sheet, which will have uh, three different disciplines that you have to pass and three different sections below it. So you have to, at events generally, or sometimes the practices, you will uh, have to participate in setting up and taking down the range. You'll have to participate in running a line and you'll have to participate in inspecting equipment. And um, generally speaking, I like to encourage marshals, uh, especially MITs, to inspect as many different items as possible. Don't just inspect the same bow <laughs> 10 times or same type of bow. You know, you want to try to get them to at least have, you, have inspected a crossbow a couple of times because they're fairly ubiquitous these days and not as, uh, they're definitely not as uh, common as bows are, but uh, they are out there and they're a very different type of thing to inspect. Um, with throwing, it's the same way, um, inspecting line setup, uh, running line and setup takedown, and then you have to have it signed each section three times. Uh, in the case of archery, once you've completed your form, you submit it to the, um, Kingdom or Marsh or the, the deputy Kingdom or Marshal. Um, and in the case of archery, you will be given a, um, open book test. So you are sent a series of questions. You have as much time as you want to fill it out. You can use the Marshall handbook to answer the questions as long as you send it back and it is all correct and shows that you've read it and understand it. Uh, um, you'll be given, uh, you'll go, go from MIT to a full Marshall. In the case of thrown weapons, you are asked to essentially run a, um, a marshal, well, usually they prefer it to be uh, a uh, event, so or at least the uh, throwing weapons at events. So you have to be not necessarily not marshal in charge, obviously, but you're there under supervision of a marshal, okay. doing the setup and takedown, running the line during the day, and um, inspecting as many items as possible. And once that happens, then the marshal who's watching you will sign off, and you'll become a full fledged marshal. Yeah. So one other thing with that with that paperwork, um, in general, the 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 goal is is to not just keep getting all your signatures from the same set of marshals. Yeah, uh, I want to get around, work with different marshals, so that more people can see what you're doing and ensure that you're doing things correctly. Yeah, basically the key is a a, a breadth of experience. So we don't, don't want you to be doing it all at the same practice or doing it all with the same marshal you want to see various marshals signing it off I, i'm assuming it's the same or I, I remember it being the same for armored combat and i'm assuming it's still like that you want to see like i didn't go to this one marshal and have it signed at nine times so i had that person sign it nine times i am not a marshal of any sort mm. um so i have i've never gone through any of the processes for that um so are there any requirements to be a marshal uh, other than, I mean, obviously you've got to fill, you know, 
be inspected the things that you just talked about but are there any other requirements um like memberships or mainly just for the city members yeah pretty much like a like a like all officers you're, you're essentially an officer for all extensive purposes you're an officer of the sca so you need to have an sca a valid active sca membership um for marshals you obviously basically you just want to have people do their paperwork and show that they you know show that you know, show that they know what they're doing what they're saying and then they can do what they they're teaching <laughs> you also have to be 18. you also have to be 18. yeah yes that's important because we yes, have a I lot have of to. families and youths who like I just want you here <laughs> remind me of little things like that yes 18 <laughs> is definitely a requirement now i know for other uh some um some other offices background checks are required is there a background check required for archery and throne weapons marshals uh no from what i understand generally speaking background yeah. checks are when you're uh, mostly for when you're dealing with youth obviously we do deal with youth but only in the context of when there's a parent or guardian present so we do not need background checks to be a marshal or a group marshal or anything like that yeah we're not considered a youth program yeah if somebody were to put together a specifically youth archery program or tourney, then that's where we probably would pull in people with background checks, but not just to be a marshal in general. That's good to know. Because archery and thrown weapons um, is something that that anybody, for the most part, can participate in. Um, how? And, and you'd mentioned that sometimes we have loaner bows or loaner equipment at events. Uh, where would families or people who want to participate find equipment that they might be able well, to use for this? That depends on where you are, obviously, where you live, because I mean, there are on some of the bigger cities and towns, cities, you, you'll have store options. I know Toronto has uh, three or four good options. Um, places like uh, Kitchener Waterloo has an excellent store. But starting out, I mean, you can probably find for, for archery, you could probably find something not too bad that even Canadian Tire or something like that, if you're willing to just do a really basic starter mode. Yep. If you're generally speaking, once people have tried it out and tried out some of the better equipment, they want something better than something you can get at Canadian Tire, but it is an option if all else fails. Gotcha. And one thing that we do require for um, archery yeah. is wooden arrows. Uh, if you want to participate in tournaments and things like that, you can obviously just go to practice and shoot whatever kind of arrow you want. But um, those are a little harder to find. Um, those, <laughs> Susan and I, between the two of us, have done enough classes in uh, fletching that uh, if you want to know how to make your own, we can probably help you out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would generally spe say speaking uh, to anybody who's interested in getting into it, uh, obviously it's a little harder these days, right now <laughs> specifically, but um, get to an event, get to a practice where there's archery going on. Um, I can't think of an event that hasn't had at least some sort of loaner equipment there, both for archery and thrown weapons. Generally speaking, each canton has a um, dedicated collection for yeah. both. If they do practices, they probably have a, a loaner equipment and people bring, usually bring things as well. That's probably the best thing is to try out the equipment before you go out and buy anything. Uh, just so you'll know kind of how, how how heavy a bow you can draw in the case of archery, um, how heavy a knife you want to throw in the case of thrown weapons, all those things like that. The best way to do it is to try out other people's equipment and, you know, of course, obviously ask them. Um, well, most people mm -hmm. are more than willing to loan things, plus we have the loaner equipment. Thrown weapons in general, um, more than anything, you, you tend to get a table of loaner equipment going there. So you can at least pick up some things and, and kind of play with them a little bit to get an idea. Um, there's also ways, once you have an idea of what you want, um, there are mail order places. Um, so, or just stores yeah. you can go to depending yeah. on where you live. Yeah, even Bass Pro Shop. Um, Bass they, Pro Shop is an excellent source for programs. Yeah, they, they are there. Um, they have a good basic bows. You're, you know, you're certainly looking for, uh, and this is why going to an, an event or talking to marshals is good. Even if on the off time, if you just want to talk to marshals, they can let you kind of walk you through what kind of bow is acceptable. 
um, because not all bows, obviously you don't want one of those metal bows, you don't want a compound bow, uh, you don't want a very modern looking bow, you're looking for basic traditional style bows. Yeah, no, you don't, you, uh, one thing you will definitely see a difference from, from watching somebody doing the Olympics is you don't have any sights or balances or stabilizers, stabilizers yeah. or any of that other lovely stuff. Um, when you're shooting in the SCA, we're, we're trying to at least as close as possible replicate how you would have shot in period. Yeah, so, but, but so. things like fiberglass are fine. Yep. Um, we really allow those. It's um, when you're getting into like this thing it looks good, actually, it's not bad. It's, you know, sometimes they're green or blue or something, but they're okay. Yeah, they, they generally look the part of a period style bow. I just actually dealt with this recently there with a chap who messaged me uh, or emailed me asking advice on where you could find a bow and all the general questions you were just asking. And <laughs> another great place to go would be the um, the Eldermere Missile Weapon Facebook group. I uh, had him post on there. I also gave him some ideas since he was in the Toronto area where he could shop. So talking to the talk going on the kingdom website and contacting your local marshal or even me the king marshal or the king of marshal at certain one asking and trying to get on the facebook group and ask people that's the best way to find out is to ask because it'll be specific depending on the practice time buses, um availability of equipments all and everything else will vary depending on where you live So I think that covers most things, but one of the things that I was going to meant to ask you about, and it was not in the list of questions I sent you, is that you both are very active in the yeoman. <laughs> so the yeoman of the wolf. Yeah, we kind of started that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us a bit about what that is and? Uh, well, we, it was it's 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 sort of a martial order that goes back almost to the uh, early earliest era of of Eldemir back in the back in the founding founding fathers days. Uh, it sort of waxed and waned over the years, but it is um, it is a martial company for um, unofficial martial company. It has no rank or standing in the SC. It's just sort of an unofficial martial company in uh, Eldemir to promote the um, participation use. Pretty much anything. In, involved in in, in um, ranged weapons, so um, thrown weapons, uh, siege weapons, archery, At combat level. archery, outlatels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's just a sort of a nice way to um, encourage people to expand their um, interests, to try out new things, to uh, not only to come out and shoot, but to marshal, to become a marshal, to sponsor a tournament to make a cool piece of kit, whether it's a, a bow or a uh, a piece of garb or a bracer or whatever it was just a, it was just a good way to sort of encourage everybody to get more involved in, and and broaden the horizons when it came to um martial combat and it with like a pretty patch and some bling when you uh a, sort of a a simple ranking system that uh you know the more you do the more you uh, rank up because everybody loves achievements, right? Yeah, and it's balanced so that even if you're not a brilliant, wonderful, I'm winning all the tournaments kind of archer, uh, there's still all kinds of ways to earn points. And it really, it's a point system. So the more active you are, even if you show up and I shot one arrow at an event, that's, you'll get a point for that because there's, there's points just for that. And there's points for service, there's points for the arts related pieces. So the idea being is certainly you will rank up faster if you're awesome at tournaments and you win them and you get extra points, but um, there still is a way to do it uh, if you're simply active and you're simply out do stuff, hopefully encouraged to be a marshal. There's points to be gained if you make up a tournament, like say at an event, you wanna run a particular kind of shoot, you make some targets and you use that and you get points for that so pretty much anything you do in fact i think we gave some points to i think up at scrail they had an indoor miniature siege engine competition and I said, sure let's do it you know if people want points for that we'll 
Get points for that. You don't get points for that. That's <laughs> cool. It's a siege engine. It's very small, but it works. Generally speaking, if you make the make people in the yeoman smile, you probably uh, regarding anything martial. And I gave I gave somebody uh, yeoman points for bouncing their knife off their target, spinning it in the air, and hitting a target that was on the ground in the wow. bullseye. Just because that was just awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't get any like points props. actually in the <laughs> tournament, but for actually bouncing off the target that was on the uh, the uh, the uh, frame and into the air and onto the target that was on the ground in the bullseye. I'm sorry, that's that's awesome. Ergo, <laughs> trick shots. And uh, by the way, Master Daffod is currently in charge of the Omen of the Wolf. So oh, okay. um, you can ask. You can obviously ask me. Nicola, any questions about that? But uh, Daffod is currently the person actually in charge of it. And in a normal year, if we have one of those again, so assuming we will, uh, we run usually during oh, the, the outdoor season, we run a, yeah. a, a season long competition. So we come up with a special shoot or a special throw, and they're usually on the same theme that goes out to every event and people can get, uh, can participate uh, at it and rack up points throughout the year. Uh, if you do both disciplines, you get more points. It's, it's kind of nice that way. And at the end, we, we recognize the first, second and third place people as well as recognizing the best people or the top point getter in each discipline as well as a random draw uh, because there have been cool prizes in the past, a random draw person who gets just a neat thing. If you showed up at one thing, you you, you uh, get one. You, if, you, you yep. get a chance of of, of winning. Yep. Nice. Yes. So the, yeah, there would be there's a sort of a, an overall champion who is the uh, winner of the combined point of both archer and throwing weapon. Uh, then there is a, a archer. And we've had some really awesome prizes in the past, including like plates and etched glasses and neat things like that. So it's it's kind of cool to get that. <laughs> it sounds interesting. I haven't participated, but now I, I want to, <laughs> assuming we can we can do that kind of thing uh, next year, hopefully. Um, because now we are in our winter, uh, going into winter, and it would be harder and harder to find places to do it anyway. Yeah. So. Yes, that is the great uh, bane of of our uh, our archery and throwing weapons existence is finding stuff finding stuff to do in the winter time other than like keeping your kit from uh, falling apart and uh, making new arrows. Yep, and you know there are sometimes some opportunities. Yeah, I see you're getting a visit there. Uh, there are some opportunities sometimes in the winter um, under normal conditions. Uh, there are some people that do some winter archery shoots, uh, sometimes outdoors ones. Um, and I know we've done thrown weapons as late as wassail in the past. So it's possible sometimes to sneak those extra things in. So weather permitting. Back, yeah, of course, weather permitting. Back, you know, hopefully once we're having events again, um, just watch out for them and, you know, uh, come out and give it a try and have some fun. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. <laughs> we are throwing sharp objects though. So and shooting. <laughs> and shooting sharp, shooting sharp objects. objects. Yeah. Well, I know it's something that my children in, enjoyed doing um, growing up in the SCA because it was something that was at most events, maybe not so much in the wintertime, but in the summertime, and uh, that they could participate in and 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 fully enjoy on their own um, when they got a bit older and uh, and didn't need to be quite so close to the range. Um, so thank you, um, thank you guys for all that you do with archery and throne weapons and in, in kingdom because you very much make sure that they happen and and uh, all of the marshals are are wonderful in making sure that these things happen at our events. So thank you guys for talking to me today about our archery and throne weapons.